This will be a video series on EBM storage. We will learn where the state variables are stored inside the EBM storage, and we will also learn how to read and write state variables using assembly. Okay, to begin with, we will first look at some yield syntax to understand the EBM storage examples that I'll show you in this video. So first of all, what is yield? Yield is a language used for inline assembly and solidity. Yield can be used by itself to write a smart contract, and it can also be used as inline assembly and solidity. For our purpose, we'll be using yield as inline assembly to read and write from state variables. The minimal amount of yield that you need to know to understand the examples for EBM storage are how to assign variables in yield, and the fact that the only data type that is supported in yield is bytes32. So let's start with how to assign variables using yield. Okay, to write yield inside solidity, we will write assembly first assembly, and inside here, all of the code will be in U. And to assign a variable, if we wanted to create a new variable inside assembly, we will say that, for example, let's say that x is equal to 1. And if you wanted to reassign it to something else, for example, let's say 2, then we will say x colon equals 2. Another way to assign variable is we can first create a variable in solidity, and then inside assembly, assign it. For example, let's say uint 256s is equal to 0. So over here, this is solidity code. And inside assembly, this will be u. To assign something to this s variable that is declared as a solidity variable, inside assembly, we will say s colon equals, let's say, 2. And then after we assign it, we can also return this, return s. OK, let's try this out. I'll hit Control s to compile a contract and then deploy your intro, and then call the function test your bar. And what do I get? I get a two bag. This is because we declared a variable called s in solidity, and inside assembly, we set this s value to two, and then we return it. So that is why you saw a two that was returned when we call the function test your bar. Okay, so that's assigning variables using yield. Next, let's take a look at yield types. The only type that is supported in yield is bytes32. For this example, we'll use assembly to assign some variables and then return them. Say assembly. And inside assembly, when we say x is equal to 1, notice that inside solidity, we're declaring it as a boolean. But inside assembly, this will be handled as bytes32. And the same goes for this variable y. We declared it as uint256. But inside assembly, this will be handled as bytes32. For example, let's say 0x AAA. And let's say z, we declare it as bytes32. For example, inside here, let's put a short string so that it fits inside bytes32. Let's say hello you. Let's see what the return values are when we call this function. I'll hit Control S to compile a contract again. Inside the deployment tab, I'll redeploy the contract. And then you'll call the function test yield types. Notice that even though inside assembly everything is handled as bytes32, when these variables are returned from a solidity function, we get x equal to true, y equals to 2730, and bytes32 is equal to whatever this is. So those are the two things that you need to know about yield to understand the examples for EBM storage. How to assign variables inside yield, and that all of the data type inside yield is bytes32. Okay, so with that said, let me give you a simple example of how state variables are stored in EBM. The way state variables inside a Solidity smart contract is stored inside EBM storage is by chunks of 32 bytes. There are two to the 256 slots, and each slot can store up to 32 bytes. In general, slots are assigned in the order that the state variables are declared. Now, there are exceptions. The rule for how slots are assigned to dynamic arrays and mappings are a little bit different. We will cover these topics in separate videos. State variables that are less than 32 bytes are packed into a slot. We will cover how state variables are packed into a single slot in a separate video. In this video, we will take a look at some simple examples, and we will use the function sStore and sLoad. sStore will take in two inputs, k and b, k will be the slot k where value v will be stored. And when we call sloadk, this will load 32 bytes from slot k. 
Okay, so let's start with some simple examples. Let's say that we have a uint256 state variable, public, and I'll name it s underscore x. And let's create several more state variables, uint256, public, s underscore y, and byte32, public, s, I'll call it underscore z. So remember I said that slots can store up to 32 bytes. And slots are signed in the order the state variables are declared. So in this contract, the first state variable that is declared is s underscore x. And also, this is a state variable of type uint256. uint256 can be converted into bytes32. In other words, this state variable will fit inside bytes32, so this will fit inside a single slot. And since it's the first state variable, this will be assigned slot 0. And the same goes for the next state variable. The next state variable that is declared in this contract is s underscore y. The data type is uint256. And again, uint256 fits inside bytes32. So this will be assigned slot 1. Okay? And the third state variable that we have is s underscore z. Again, this data type fits under bytes32, since this data type is bytes32. And how about the slot? Well, according to this rule, this is the first one that is declared, so it's slot 0. This is the second one that is declared, so it's slot 1. This is the third one that is declared, so this is slot 2. Okay, so that is how slots are assigned to state variables. Let's look at some simple examples of sstore and sload. First, I'll show you some examples of sstore. Store is going to take two inputs, k and b, and it will store the value b to slot k. So let's see what this means. Let's say assembly. For this example, let's store something inside s underscore x. So to do this, I'll type s store. And the next input is the location of the slot. Slot 0, so that will be 0, and the value that we want to put in. Now this value that we store has to fit inside bytes32. For this example, let's say we'll store 111. So what's going on here is the same as writing the code s of x equals 111. This code is in solidity and this is in u. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's say s store. Let's store the value 222 to the state variable s underscore y. The state variable s underscore y is located at slot 1. So to slot 1, we'll set this to 222, so the value will be 222. Okay, and another example, let's store something to the state variable s underscore z. s store. This state variable is in slot 2, so here I'll put in 2, access slot 2, and to slot 2, store the value, let's say 0x ab ab ab. Another way to access these slots instead of manually counting and then putting in the numbers, is to say state variable dot slot. For example, I'll copy this again. Then I'll rename this function again, test sstore again. So currently, we're manually counting the slots and then hard coding the slots over here. Another way to access the slot is by saying state variable, for example, s sub x, that's the state variable, then access the property called dot slot. This will store the slot where this state variable is stored. Another example, slot one is s of y. So here I can say s of y dot slot. And likewise, slot two will be s of z, say s underscore z dot slot. And for this example, I'll change the numbers around. So say one, two, three, four, five, six, and bytes 32 will be cd, cd, cd. Okay, so these are some basic examples of how to write to a state variable using sstore. Next, let's look at some examples of how to read data using sload. Okay, so for the next example, I declare some variables that will be returned, uint256x, y, and bytes32z. Inside the assembly, we will get the values that are stored in these three state variables, assign it to these variables, and then return it. For example, Let's get the value s underscore x. This is stored in slot 0, so we can do assign to this local variable x, get the value that is stored in slot 0 by calling s load 0. Okay, you can also do the same for the state variable s underscore y. 
assign to the local variable y, get the data from start 1. And lastly, we'll do the same for bytes 32. Assign to the variable z, get the data from start 2. And again, slot 2 will store the state variable s underscore z. Like what we did over here, instead of manually putting in the slot where the state variables are stored, we said state variable dot slot. And we can do the same over here to get the data stored in a state variable. So copy this, paste it here. And then now we name this function to s test s load again. And this time, instead of using these numbers, we'll replace it with the state variable dot slot. So the zero slot will be s of x dot slot. The first slot will be s of y dot slot. And the last one will be s of s underscore z dot slot. Okay, let's try executing these functions. I'll hit control s to compile a contract, clear out the previous one, deploy a new one, and then first I'll set the state variables by calling these functions. Let's call the function test s store. So I'll call this function, okay? And this will set the state variable s of x to 111, s of y to 222, and s underscore z to 0x ab ab ab. Okay, let's try getting these state variables. To get these state variables, I'll call the function test s load. s load will load 32 bytes from slot 0, 32 bytes from slot 1, and 32 bytes from slot 2. Okay, so let's call the function test s load, and we get the values 111, 222, and bytes 32 that ends with ab ab ab. Okay, let's do the same for this function. Call this function test s store again, and then we'll call test s load again to get the values. So when we call this function test s store again, it's gonna store one, two, three for the state variable s underscore x, four, five, six for the state variable s underscore y, and zero x cd 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 for the state variable s underscore z. So call the function test s store again, and then call the function test s load again to get the values stored inside the state variable. And what do we get? We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and bytes 32 ending with cd, cd, cd. In summary, in this video, we looked at how to assign variables using yule, and we looked at some examples of s store and s load to read and write from EBM storage.